Hey, Abizu here and in this video I'll show you a step-by-step -step guide on how I was able to go from zero to over $580,000 in sales in just 8 months. Okay, before we dive deeper into this video, I just first want to show you guys proof because some of you guys, uh, you don't know me. So I just want to first introduce myself. Um, I'm Ivy Zhu. Uh, basically, basically, I started around May, uh, around May, and I documented my whole journey on my YouTube channel. So you guys can see like all this progress um, I was posting back eight months ago, like all the videos. So make sure to check out the videos later on as well. Uh, so you guys can see the whole the whole journey basically and my progress and basically my growth like so you guys have a realistic expectation and like a realistic view of how it really looks like and as you guys can see currently i'm making around 15 13k a day and i'm going to also show you my ads manager uh, this is my second ads manager that i'm using mostly currently and here i spent 96k i made 188k um, then there is another ad account and here i made uh, here I spent 116k and made um, almost 300k. So as you guys can see, it doesn't really add up. There's missing, I think around like 80k is missing, around 80 to 90k is missing. That's because some of the sales are not tracked by Facebook. Also because I use Google ads as well. And also through email marketing, those are also not tracked um, in Facebook's ads manager. Okay guys, I also want to mention another thing is uh, I have a giveaway for you guys. So let's go back into the camera and I'm going to tell you more. I'm really happy to announce that me and Ricky Hayes, we're hosting together a massive giveaway. Basically six people can win. And uh, what we are giving away is for the first prize winner, we're giving away a 60 minute coaching call with me. Uh, then to second place winner, uh, we're going to give away a 30 minute coaching call with me. And then for the third place winner, uh, he, he or her is going to receive $50 to his or her PayPal account. Uh, then Ricky is going to give away for the fourth place winner. He's going to give away a 60 minute coaching call with him. Uh, fifth place winner is going to win his course for free. And then the sixth, the sixth place winner is going to win $50 to his or her PayPal account. So now you're probably wondering, how do I win this giveaway? Well, this is very easy. So basically we have five steps. So the first step is subscribe to my YouTube channel and go to Ricky Hayes channel and subscribe to him as well. The second, so the second task is share my video to a friend and also share Ricky Hayes to a friend as well. Uh, the third, the third task is like this video and also like Ricky's giveaway video. The fourth step is leave five unique comments under this video and also go to Ricky Hayes giveaway video and also leave five unique comments as well. And the fifth step is go to my Facebook group down below and join my group and also go to Ricky Hayes Facebook group and also join his Facebook group. So basically all the steps are down below. You have all the links. So go to the description, uh, do all those things because it is really required that you that you take all those steps. Uh, we'll be picking winners only from those who complete all those five steps for both my channels and social medias and also for Ricky Hayes channel and his social media as well. So like all these steps, they're absolutely required for you to win uh, these prizes. Okay, so what am I going to cover in this step-by-step -step guide? So I'm gonna first gonna talk about how I found my winning product, uh, basically the best product research method to finding winners. Uh, then how I tested the product with Facebook ads uh, then how I scaled it from zero to $186,000 in just one month and how I'm scaling currently. And the fourth step is basically, uh, I'm gonna tell you about the issues that I ran into when I, when I was scaling and basically I tell you the mistakes that you should avoid. A lot of like those things that a lot of YouTubers don't really talk about. So how I found, how I found my winning product is I really focus on doing in-depth research on each products. And I really focus on understanding the market and the buyer. Um, so what I do is I really go on Google and just search the product and look, um, like look in the in blogs around like about the niche and about the product as well. And I really focus on launching quality instead of quantity. So a lot of people they find like 30 products and they just gonna launch them and like test products every single day. 
I, I kind of like my every launch takes me like one to two days basically to make it as good as possible. And you need to understand um, like what is a winning product. Um, what I did is um, I saw hundreds of winners over the last few months before I found my winner. So this has really helped me to kind of like have this intuition for product research. And how I found my product was on AliExpress and I found an untapped product that had only 200 orders at the time. And also like some information about the product, it, was a, it had a broad appeal, uh, like a huge market, huge audience, and it solves a problem. Okay, then the next step is like how I made my product into a winner. So I don't really just blindly test products every day, you know, and just hope that they will work. I really focus on making the product work. So what I did is I, I went on Google and I read blogs and about the niches so I understand the pain points and the things that the niche and the people who would buy this product just want. I, I really need to understand the people, uh, how I can help them. So I really like, I just really did a lot of research on their pain points and benefits they would like. And I explained the best benefits and the pain points uh, on the product page and in my video really, really well. And basically I made the product even more awesome. Like it sounded more awesome than it actually is. So I basically artificially created the wow factor for the product. And another thing that I really focus on a lot is making really high quality videos and very high quality thumbnails. I guess you guys can see it from my YouTube channel. I just really enjoy like videos, graphic design and stuff like that. Um, so the key to Facebook ads is just the creative, the thumbnail, the video or the image. Um, and just forget about the settings like one day click, uh, $5 a day budget versus $20 a budget, narrow narrowing it down with engaged shoppers or not. Like those just, those are just small things. You should be focusing on the big things, which is the thumbnail and the video. And the reason why your ads aren't performing, uh, are like are performing badly is because the video and the thumbnail is just really bad, guys. I've seen so many, I've seen so many people like launching ads asking me feedback and it's just really, really bad. And Facebook ads is all about catching people's attention, keeping it for long enough, and then motivating people uh, to click on your ad and purchase. Basically, that's all. It's kind of like disruption or interruption marketing. You know, you just wanna catch people off guard like with your, like with your thumbnail and with your video. So these are really good examples of, the, of good thumbnails. So, on the left side, you can see, you know, you can see someone like with scissors, you know, like cutting, cutting a, cutting a cable. That's kind of unusual. And also the text really also helps like the charger is unbreakable. Um, then there is another one. Uh, I see this a lot. This is also very good when you see multiple images shown of the product, you know, in different scenarios, this is working also very, very well. Like a lot of like, YouTubers and people or like gurus are just teaching you like use arrow and emoji and that's just basic stuff and also another update guys nowadays I really don't recommend doing arrows you can actually get your ad account banned so just be very careful with, with uh, arrows actually my ad account uh, got disabled disabled because of arrows um, so just be careful uh, then on the right side you can also see you know you can see uh, there's the four images showing you know um, basically the wow factor of the product is just showing uh, like what is it for so this is very like this is very good like those thumbnails are very good and as you can see by the number of shares like these products have made over I think over like 300k or more depending on the targeting but like when you see so many shares these are performing really really well like at least 300k at least um, so let's talk about the elements of a winning video ad. So the first three seconds are the most important. Uh, you really need to show the wow factor or benefit. You just really need to catch your attention or they just leave the video. And the video really needs to be engaging. So like every three to four seconds, the clip or the scene just needs to change. You, sh you cannot just show all the time just one thing or like a static shot. So you should, you should change up your shots every three to four seconds. You can also add some transitions. Those also help. Uh, I've seen some people doing zoom transitions, like slide to the side. Uh, those are very modern. Uh, those work r really, really well. So if you have a video video editor, 
uh, they can do that for you. Uh, what's also very important is that you need captions. The caption need to describe the benefits and also like explain like how it solves the customer's pain points. Um, like you really need to focus on the customer. Like when you're doing when you're doing like video ad or product research, don't think about like what you like. Think about what your customer would like and really focus on them. It's all about your customers. And when you're writing the captions into the video, you really need to make sure that they're readable. Like a lot of people I saw, I, I noticed like they make really small text or like the background is just clashing and people can't even read it. So that's really no good. You need to make sure the captions are readable. Um, the format, you can do 1000 uh, times 1000 or 1080 times 1080p. Uh, that works well. Uh, you can add black bars at the top and bottom. I see some, some people do white bars or black bars. That's totally fine. And at the top, you can write something like, I need this, or you can write something like a benefit point as well. And you can add an emoji, you know, like hard or like the, like the emoji with the hard eyes as well. That works also as well. Uh, another thing about fonts, like a lot of people are curious. Um, I kind of recommend like Lado Black. Um, that seems the, to be the best font, but you can use like any of the popular fonts like Helvetica and stuff like that. And I usually use all caps um, like in the video or in the thumbnail as well. Uh, you really need to make sure that you use loyalty free music. So just search uh, audio library on Google and you'll find some really good links on how to get uh, like loyalty free music. Um, so for video editing software, what I use is Adobe Premiere Pro and Animodo. Um, Animodo is kind of like more beginner friendly. It's a little slightly more uh, expensive. Um, so it's really up to you, like what do you want to try? Um, I use Adobe Premiere Pro uh, because I use it also for my YouTube channel. Uh, but like if you have a video editor, you don't, you don't really need to worry about these things. You know, you can easily hire them for like 20 to $30 per video. Um, uh, then you know you really need to make sure that you add your logo as a what like as a watermark so nobody nobody steals your video as well. You really need to make sure like that happens nowadays quite often. And I, I just want to give you guys a really big like disclaimer: do not steal content. Like I really don't recommend doing copyright infringement. Like just just don't do that because like um, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you like what happens basically when you download someone else's. Uh, like ad, you know, you, or you take someone else's content and uh, they report you uh, to Facebook for copyright infringement. What happens is Facebook will take down your ad within 24 hours. And this is speaking from my own personal experience. I actually reported someone and their video ad got taken down. Um, they saw two of my videos and those were taken down within 24 hours. So when that when that happens, you know, when you steal someone's um, video and your, uh, like it gets taken down for copyright infringement, then your ad account might get penalized. And if you have repeated copyright strikes, uh, what will happen is your whole business manager uh, will be shut down. And I also heard some, some people like losing their uh, Facebook profile like connected to business manager because like Facebook really takes this thing, uh, really takes copyright infringement seriously. Like I talked to my Facebook, Facebook rep and uh, they really, they just really like stress this information that Facebook really doesn't like copyright infringement. And so what I recommend is just take your own unique video, um, you know, with your iPhone, that's totally fine. Or you can use a camera as well if you have. Um, you can also tell your uh, supplier to make a video or you can even outsource it to Upwork or Fiverr if you find someone good. Um, but the best option that I recommend is that you outsource it to a professional production company. Uh, that's what I did. Um, I use Ecombits and like those videos, uh, like their videos have really helped me um, scale scale my product. So you really need to focus nowadays on really good videos and unique videos, not something taken from somebody else. So a quick disclaimer: like if I see if I see you steal my video, uh, I'll report you for copyright infringement. Um, I've already done it before. You know, I also talked to a lot of other people, like other six, seven, and eight-figure dropshippers. And basically they told me like uh, it is happening to them as well. Other people, they just take their video and just run it and scale it. And then they get reported by like my, the friends of mine, right? So just don't do that guys. Like don't take other people's videos, 
take your take your unique content it's gonna perform really well if you know how to take videos as well um, and also look at this as a real business guys like stealing videos and stuff like that it's kind of like really sneaky it's kind of like a sneaky tactic to make money and like I'm not here to teach you guys like sneaky tactics I'm teaching you guys how to build a real business that's gonna yeah just like a real business guys so okay so now let's move on to ad copy so ad copy um, you should also focus on those um, like what I focus the most is the thumbnail and the video but ad copy you should also focus on it a little bit as well and basically um, you should write about a benefit point uh, like a benefit or a pain point so um, you know like when the customer is reading it it should create some emotions or curiosity so you can write something like no more and then something about a pain point or OMG I love how this does that you know or stop this pain point you know and, and stuff like that and then you can then you can you know add the link uh, I don't recommend using bit links I just use the Shopify product page I don't even shorten it uh, because I talk to my coder as well uh, and he said like the URL redirects uh, they kind of slow down um, they slow down your loading by a little bit so I don't really do uh, URL redirects in Shopify as well so you don't need to do them and these are the most common emojis so you can also use them for your ad copy as well so Facebook testing strategy so the strategy that I recommend is designed to find your winners at the lowest investment possible uh, so you don't lose too much money on testing and that is recommended for people who haven't scaled before like that is their first time and they're still testing to find their first winner uh, personally uh, the method that I'm gonna show you uh, this testing strategy I don't use it anymore um, I have lots of pixel data uh, I have lookalikes uh, in my same niche uh, you know so I usually test more aggressively nowadays um, and then uh, Facebook ads uh, for me is more like an art than a science uh, I don't really have like strict rigid rules that I follow every time uh, I really need I need to look at multiple factors and it just really depends but I'll I'll try my best to explain you guys like my thought process and like the rules that I have so you guys can kind of so, so it can be more actionable for you guys and a uh, quick note is I used to test with three uh, dollar assets back in October uh, but now I recommend doing five dollar assets so now let's talk about the strategy right so I recommend doing six to eight ad sets at five US dollars a day uh, also a quick note is uh, I recommend a general store in the beginning uh, so you start with a general store once you find your first winner you just change everything your logo your theme and you switch it into a niche store and you focus on adding more products in the same niche right so let's go back to the testing strategy so basically six or eight assets at five dollars a day each uh, you do um, website conversion purchase objective and you do people who live in and I recommend top tier countries so I just listed them below um, I, re I really recommend those uh, especially if you started like me with just only PayPal and no other payment gateway uh, top tier countries are the best to target because uh, they will usually know how to pay with PayPal or they know how to pay with PayPal without a credit card uh, without a PayPal account so those are the ones that I recommend uh, for age ranges uh, 20 to 65 plus or 25 to 65 plus it really depends on the product um, you know if it's something for older people you can push it up to 25 to 65 plus starting uh, I don't recommend doing like 18 and stuff um, I usually like with Facebook ads I don't really focus on the young crowd crowds they don't really they don't really have money to spend so I just focus on you know the older like 20 plus uh, audiences and with genders uh, it's usually uh, both or you can try men or women it just really depends on the product like if you know uh, it's a you know if it if you know it's a men's product like you don't need to add women there uh, with placement um, I do automatic but if you want to do Facebook feed plus Instagram feed that's also totally fine and uh, I do one interest per ad set and I kind of like to split it up so if we are doing six to eight ad sets I don't like to do like all small audiences I like to do a few small a few mid-size and few larger size so a few at 1 million to 5 million uh, a few um, 10 like 5 to 10 and then a few um, 10 to 15 and maybe like one ad set that's gonna be even larger you know and a quick note don't narrow down by engaged shoppers uh, never really worked for me mm, I don't really recommend that and I also do one day click 
Okay, so now let's talk about the strategy, right? So you launch it at the midnight of the ad account and usually, you know, by the middle of the day, after 20 hours, uh, like you're gonna spend around 40 to 50% uh, of your daily budget, right? So if it's uh, $5 a day uh, ad set, it's basically gonna spend around two and a half dollars, right? And I just basically kill any ad sets uh, that have more than $1.5 um, uh, cost per click or more, basically. That's just too expensive. Um, so those I just kill immediately. Uh, so those with CPC 1.5 or below, um, I just keep them running. Um, and then, you know, uh, if you, so like a few, a few things about the indicators, right? If it's a winner. So if you get one sale, then the product might have potential. That's a good sign. And if you get two sales or more, that is a really, really good sign. So that means like on day two, like if you get some sales, like one or two, just start adding more ad sets. Add 10 or 15, it just really depends on your confidence, you know, on your, how you like to risk basically at $5 a day. Um, and you need to, you need them to start for, from day two, basically, you know, you do the same interest targeting, just try different, uh, interests, you know, use the suggested, uh, or try, uh, audience insights or try to think of different angles, you know, from that niche. So maybe brands, uh, maybe magazines, you know, so something like that and try to come up with another 10 to 15 ad sets. Um, you know, but if the product didn't get any sales, um, like on, on day one and then on day two, usually I let it spend another half day and that's going to spend, the assets are going to spend like $7.5. And if there, there's no add to card, um, then I just kill the asset, right? And if you see like you're only left with like one or two assets now, um, like all the other assets just died, just kill the campaign, just kill it now, cut your losses quick, you know? And the thing is, guys, if it's a winner, it's gonna keep getting sales on day two as well when you launch those ad sets, like the 10 or 15. And then, you know, uh, day three and beyond, you basically rinse and repeat, you know. Um, you really launch a lot of ad sets. Basically, every day you launch like 20, uh, 10, 20, or even 30 ad sets at five to $20 a day. Really depends on you, how you feel like, uh, how you feel like doing it on your confidence. And basically you launch a lot of assets every day and you quickly kill the bad ones. And you're just looking for the best audiences now. Um, and then, you know, your product should be starting to get profitable by day three or day four. Um, if not, you should, you should probably like slow down and don't really force the product too much. Um, you should, especially like if you're tight on budget, you can lose money that way. I've made the mistake uh, several times and I was just like unnecessarily losing money. Usually after seven to ten days, I'll just start. Uh, I'll just start adding uh, video view lookalikes, and then um, yeah, fifty percent, and then I'll start with seventy-five percent video views, and then ninety-five percent video views uh, for lookalikes. And I usually usually just choose one country, which is usually uh, USA. That's where I get the most of the sales. So that's why I start lookalikes there, and then also I start retargeting with three to five dollars a day. Uh, I'm gonna talk about retargeting a little bit later. Um, so for the lookalike percentages, what I like to use is I like to use Trackify and I use all the percentages that they have. So it's like 1%, 2%, 3%, all the way to 20%. And I, I just test every, like every, every one of them. And um, like if you don't have Trackify, just use different per percentages, you know. Um, just maybe like split those percentages into four ad sets, uh, you know, like 1%, you know. Uh, two to four percent, you know, four to seven percent, seven to ten. You know, it just kind of up to you. Um, I just recommend like doing larger audiences. Um, they tend to work better now. Um, then what you should be doing is, um, like, what I do is like I usually start my lookalikes and retargeting later than most of people. I just like my lookalikes to have more data um, because like the more data they have. Uh, they tend to be more effective. So I don't I don't really force them too early. I kind of like to do them a little bit later. Okay, so for retargeting, uh, I usually start them after seven to 10 days of launching the product. And for retargeting, I use dynamic product ads and I segment, I segment them to one day, two to three days, three to seven days. And I do them for view content and add to cart. Um, what I also do is I retarget with the original video with a different thumbnail. Uh, I also retarget with an image. Uh, and as you can see, I'm doing three types of retargeting. Um, the same video, 
image and dynamic product ad. And if you're doing so much retargeting, um, you know, you should be doing them at really low budgets, you know, in the beginning, you know, probably like $2 or something. Um, or you can do less retargeting, you know, in the beginning, you can maybe just do image and the video in the beginning. Uh, but the key is like when you're doing so much retargeting is you should have different like um, different ad copies, different discount codes, you know, sometimes you get 5%, sometimes you get free shipping, you know, you just really, you just really need to switch it up. So people are always hit by like different deals and different, you know, angles, basically. And for retargeting, you can retarget video viewers, uh, 50, 75, 95% view content, add to cart, you know, uh, initiate checkout, uh, and also make sure to execute purchasers. Uh, there's also even more people you can retarget, but that's for like another video. Uh, it's a little bit more advanced as well. And now let's talk about scaling. So how I scaled back in October uh, 2018, that was uh, a few months ago. So scaling a winning product with Facebook ads is pretty easy, especially if the product is new, you know, like almost everything will work. So guys, like don't think like, what you're missing is a scaling strategy. What you're missing is a good video and a good winning product. It's not, it's usually not a scaling strategy from what I've saw, what I've seen from my students or other people who message me for feedback. And um, so I scaled basically by choosing the ad sets um, because I was launching so many ad sets, you know, like every day, like 10, 20 ad sets, you know, at low budgets, like five to 10, maybe $15 a day, I was launching them. And basically, you know, I just found those uh, who, per, who had ROAS at least free or more. And basically, uh, if, they, if, if they had consistent ROAS above free or more for five to seven days, um, I just duplicated them into higher budgets. Uh, you can duplicate them into another campaign or even in the same campaign, that's fine. Uh, but what's key is uh, you duplicate them into higher budgets. So maybe from $20 to 50 uh, and 15 to 30 or 45, it just really depends on the level of your confidence. And uh, when I hit my first 10K a day, or I think I also hit a 12K a day back in October, um, I just had so many ad sets and most of them were just 20 to $30 a day. And maybe some of them were like 50 or 60. So guys, like the horizontal scaling really works. Um, it's just really time consuming. You have like, I had like hundreds, I think I had like hundreds of ad sets. It's like kind of annoying to manage, uh, but guys, it, it works. Horizontal scaling works. It works better than vertical scaling, like increasing budgets. Uh, those just quickly lost me money. So I don't, I don't really do them as much. Um, so basically like with this method, you're, look, you're looking for as many interests and lookalikes that work, you know, and you're turning off those that don't work. Uh, you're just finding the best audiences that are giving, are, that are making you money. Um, so how I'm scaling now is kind of a little bit different. So I launch 50 to $100 a day ads it straight. Uh, I do interest and lookalikes. Uh, most of the interests are actually performing way better uh, than lookalikes actually. And you know, once, once I have like more data, uh, which I do nowadays, um, so I narrow down by age, um, country, gender, placement uh, using the breakdown tool. Uh, and for me, just mostly just United States. So that's where I sell the most. And, you know, uh, when I have like the best performing ad sets for like three to five days at those 50 or $100 uh, a day uh, budgets, um, I, just add, I just create a new campaign budget optimization uh, campaign at 250 or 500 or $1,000 a day, just kind of depending on my mood. If I'm feeling like doing 500 or 1,000, you know, I just kind of, like I said before, Facebook ads, it's more like an art than a science. So I just kind of do them a little bit randomly. And, you know, I just choose, I just choose the best performing ad sets uh, in the last three to five days, like for three to five days. And I choose five best ad sets and I add them to uh, campaign budget optimization. So it has only five ad sets in the campaign budget optimization campaign. Um, or what I also do is I just launch the um, uh, 250 or uh, $500 a day or sometimes even $1,000 a day CBOs with just interests that work in the past as well that I remembered. So that is also something that I do. Um, and the key is that, you, that I kill assets fast. So I usually check my assets after like 20% of the budget spent 
um, on the day one. And uh, this is the time where I start killing. Um, you know, basically, I'm gonna explain in the next slide, but like this is when I kill after 20% uh, spent of the daily budget. Um, and then I check it a few times throughout the day as well. And then the next, uh, like the next way uh, of killing, of like turning off ad sets um, is um, when the ad sets spend 50% uh, of the of that daily budget on day one, uh, sometimes even sooner if the stats are very bad. So now I'm gonna explain like, when do I turn off ad sets while scaling? So if an ad set got a sale, um, I just always start looking at the ROAS or cost per purchase. And I use order metrics app to see my average profit per order, which is more accurate uh, for me than break even margin of the product. Cause let's say you're selling a 40, uh, $40 product and your margin is $25, right? So you'd let, you would have your max cost of purchase would be $25, right? But the thing guys, for me, it's actually different. Uh, I have a lot of upsells and it's increasing my average order, uh, my average profit per order. So basically my average order uh, profit per order is $30. So actually at $25, you know, um, like usually we'd be killing the ad set because it's break even, but I can keep it running and it's still giving me $5 profit, right? So that's why I just really use order metrics to track it more accurately. And that way I can kind of scale even more. Um, and also what I do is, um, and when deciding whether to, uh, to turn off an ad set or not, is I look at it in the last seven days, three days and today. And basically I turn off ad sets based on the last three days, including today. So I, I turn off everything that is unprofitable or break even. So you basically look at your ROAS or better even you look at your cost for purchase. Um, if I, so if I have like the campaign budget optimizations at like $500 a day or $1,000 a day, I just looked at them at the last two days uh, time frame, including today, because the budgets are very high. Um, I don't want to look at them at longer time frames because I'll, I can start losing money quickly on them. So that's why I kind of check on them in the in the two day time frame. Um, and whenever like you're hesitating, you're thinking like you don't know if you should turn off the ad set, always look at the averages of your campaign. So at the bottom, you can see the averages of the campaign and look at the cost per purchase, the average, the cost per click, the um, you, the click-through rate, you know, the link click-through rate and also the CPMs of the campaign. So just look at those and if the asset is just like in two or three of those, he just it is just like way below average, just turn off the asset, you know, just turn it off. Okay, so now let's talk about like when I was scaling. So what I was doing back then when I was scaling um, in October. So when I started scaling, it was just so much work, guys. I was like, I was very stressed. At the time, I was like, it was kind of out of my reality. Um, you know, I went from zero to I think 10K a day in just seven, 17 days. So it just went very, very fast for me. And, you know, like what I was doing, I was just kind of scrambling, it was just too, so much work. And I was like working on optimizing my store. Um, I changed my general store to a niche store. I just deleted all the products, the old products that were unrelated. Um, I changed my theme. Um, I changed my logo as well. Um, I hired uh, I hired more VAs. I had one VA before, but then I hired more. Um, I also work on creating a system, basically like a lot of like spreadsheets um, to track a lot of things like refunds, disputes, uh, you know. And also I taught my VAs just to do everything and talk to the suppliers themselves. So I don't have to overlook every refund and every return because like if I would have to do that, I wouldn't have time for anything. And during that time, I also outsourced email marketing to James Matthewman, uh, who's a good friend now. And basically, um, he helped me generate extra 10 to 18% revenue every month through email marketing. I was just really surprised. Uh, I thought email marketing is just dead, but um, it is not. It is making me so much money. Uh, like basically, you know, when, when I was having like 20% profit, uh, you know, like without without like the email marketing, my profit would be just so much, so much lower with that. And another thing that happened is uh, when I scaled uh, in October, I think it was around October or end of October, I scaled to 12K a day. It was just with PayPal. And um, I got a hold and a rolling reserve and just really messed, messed me up. 
Uh, I made a video about that when I scaled. Um, you guys can see it's, I think, a few months old. So you guys can check it out on my channel after watching this video. Um, it's all documented, you know, um, I think, I think, yeah, I was kind of very stressed during that time. Um, yeah, and also like when I was scaling, what I did is I work a lot on my conversion rate. Uh, I improved my page speed. I just hired someone on Upwork to increase my page speed. I think it costs around 40 bucks, um, you know, for increasing the page, spe uh, the page speed. Uh, then what I did is I was looking only for the best photo reviews. Uh, what I see a lot of people do is they use looks reviews and they just upload a sh like a, a lot of uh, like a lot of reviews and they don't really look at the reviews. So they have like bad English, they have like Russian signs there, you know, like Russian language. And when an American comes there and they see like foreign language, poor English, or they see the images, you know, that look very low quality and it looks like it's a low quality product from China, it's gonna hurt your conversion rate, guys. So really be picky about choosing the best reviews to put on your stores. Uh, you should be also doing is you should add trust badges under every add to cart and every checkout button. Um, this is like trust badges work very well uh, for audiences above 30, 40. Um, you know, if you're if you're selling to younger crowds, uh, you don't need a trust badge. Uh, it's also most likely gonna hurt you if you're doing um, like young audiences. But I don't really sell to young people. Uh, I like to sell to people like 30 and plus. Um, then what I also recommend is have a GIF or a GIF. On your product page that shows that shows the benefit of the product the wow factor of the product so they kind of get reminded again um there's also like more information about that uh, i made an in-depth video a 40 minute video uh on my youtube channel uh, i'll link it down below uh, in the description so you guys can see basically there's even more tips um i, I don't want to i didn't want to add it here because the video would just get so long um then for aov uh, i use a lot of apps uh, you guys can go to www.ivzoo.com and resources page and there I kind of recommend some of the apps uh, and if you sign up through my link, you will receive a lot of free bonuses for that as well. Um, so, for, like, so for the apps that I use to increase my average order value, uh, basically I use Cardhook, which is a post-purchase upsell. So when somebody purchases, uh, they'll, see, they'll see immediately one uh, like one upsell, if they decline it, they can see another one. And basically this continues like in total, like six upsells, basically like free upsells and free downsells. Um, so I use Cardhook. In combination, I also use Reconvert. Uh, it is a really good, this is a really good app that I use. Um, it kind of like changes your thank you page. And what it does is when people go to your thank you page, uh, the Shopify thank you page, they'll see a pop-up. Uh, like you can set up a pop-up with a discount code uh, when they reorder, you know. Um, also, you can add the track button, which I really love. Um, if you have, if you have on your thank you page a track your order button, it's gonna be very easy for customers. Like you don't really need your, you don't really need to like track your order page. Your customers can just go to the email, click on the order, and they'll go to the thank you page, and then just click on the button track order, and immediately they'll see the status of their order. So it's making it way easier. They don't have to copy paste a tracking number and it's just way, way simpler that way. So this is also very good for improving the customer happiness, the customer experience. Then there is SMS Bump. Uh, basically, it's abandoned card SMS messenger app. Uh, currently, it's making me around $500 a day. It's performing very, very well. Um, so yeah, it's very good app. Uh, I made a video about it uh, in one of my older videos, so I also recommend checking that video. Uh, then there is Shop Message, that is abandoned card messenger app as well, also pretty good. And then there is Lime Spot, which kind of like recommends products. And the Lime Spot app is really good for uh, niche stores. Uh, for general stores, it tends to work uh, less effectively. Okay, so now let's talk about the issues that I ran into while scaling. Uh, that is something that a lot of like gurus and a lot of YouTubers don't talk about. Um, I kind of like from what I noticed is um, like a lot of people, they talk about like product research, about like scaling and testing, but they don't really talk about like what to do, or, like how to deal with issues, guys. And when you scale to six figures quickly, um, you're going to run into issues. And um, I just want to educate you guys. I just want to give you like a brief rundown 
on like the most common issues that, that can happen to you. So the first thing is PayPal hold. That is unfortunately almost unavoidable. Uh, that will just happen. Uh, PayPal just does it for security, security reasons, you know. Uh, they just wanna make sure that you're legit. So, you know, they're just gonna give you a hold or a rolling reserve, uh, which is totally fine. It's kind of like a test. If you can survive it, you know, it means that you mean business. And, you know, if you can survive, it's just gonna be, it's just gonna be amazing. So, you know, don't worry too much about PayPal uh, holds. Just make sure that you're running a legit business you're fulfilling your orders. You have you have good customer um, good customer service. You're selling uh, good quality products, and you will be fine with PayPal. You know. And also another thing is uh, use a PayPal auto tracking app. Uh, this will automatically upload tracking numbers to PayPal, uh, and that also helps. Um, you know, I started only with PayPal because um, we don't have Stripe. I don't have Shopify payments uh, in my country, which is Czech Republic, and so um, I just used PayPal, you know, and it was very problematic uh, just to use PayPal uh, because of the holds. It was very hard to scale. So I got a second card processor, uh, which is called BlueSnap. Uh, BlueSnap is a payment processor for cards and credit cards. Uh, and what I really like about them is they don't really put holds on dropshippers. Uh, they don't really like out of a sudden just ban you um, like Stripe does. So uh, I really recommend uh, BlueSnap. And also in the resources page, um, I have, um, I have like more, uh, I have like more information about BlueSnap. So you guys can sign up um, if you guys go to resources. Uh, there you guys can also sign up uh, for BlueSnap. There's more information. And basically, if you sign up through my link, you know it's gonna help you help you get that. But let's keep talking about this topic. You know uh, the issues that I like run into was I also had two bad suppliers, uh, two of them. And basically, what they did is they like their tracking numbers they gave me and they didn't work for 15 to 20 days so what happened is like they told me like yeah you're shipping within two or three days here are the tracking numbers and i was thinking okay i'm fine i have the tracking numbers they're shipping it out customers are gonna get it on time but what happened is they gave me the tracking numbers and nothing would happen like they just wouldn't work and they wouldn't ship for 15 to 20 days so basically you know the order would come, I would give it to my supplier and nothing would be happening for like 15, 20 days. Um, like the customer is just like emailing us like, what the hell is happening? Where is my order? And you know, we're just like, we're just like talking to the suppliers and they're like, yeah, yeah, we're shipping, you know, we're already sh shipping. But then what I figure out is it took them like 15, 20 days to ship my products. And then it also t took another 15 to like 18 days to arrive. So my shipping times were like 30 to 35 days, um, which really caused issues with PayPal. Um, so what I really recommend is you need to make sure to check on your supplier, um, like if he's actually shipping the product. So check their tracking numbers, if they're working, check if their supplier is legit, uh, because unfortunately a lot of suppliers, they lie. So you really need to be careful. Um, also, what happened to me is somebody stole my video they copied my product page and they copied my store's phone number. And those people were scammers. Uh, they didn't they didn't fulfill any orders. They just scaled the products without you know paying for the goods. And uh, what happened is they when they stole my phone number um, and they stole I think like some customer support. I'm not sure if they stole my email. Probably not. But they stole my phone number and I was getting a ton of a ton of like hate email and hate calls from that because my phone number, it would go directly to uh, voicemail telling people uh, our email address, our support email address. So people would go from that store, the scammer store, uh, call my number from that was on their store. They would call my number. They would figure out like my email and they would email me with a lot of like hate, hate, like hate emails. And you know, it just really messed up our customer service. We were just getting so much, so many emails. Another thing, due to slow shipping times, the 30 or 35 days, my, all, my ads got penalized for low customer feedback score. Uh, this made December and January like so, so hard. Uh, the profit was around 10% because the ads got just so expensive uh, by then. You know, my CPMs were just so expensive. Um, and it was like very, very hard. And that's why like in January, there were times that I was making like $60 a day and it was also unprofitable, I was losing money.
you know, during those times. So, you know, you guys can test with AliExpress in the beginning, but you should never scale with AliExpress. Like once you get like 30 orders a day, just switch to a supplier, but make sure you find a good supplier. Um, also, some other issues that happened to me is uh, I had to fire my accountant. He was very bad. Uh, he caused me a lot of issues. I had to pay so much extra. Um, yeah, I don't really want to talk about that. It's pretty, I uh, kind of kind of makes me emotional. So let's not talk about that. Um, then, you know, then the Google ads agency guy, I uh, also had to fire him. He wasn't, he wasn't doing the job properly. He wasn't doing it well. Uh, then also I had to fire a few VAs. So, you know, uh, just be careful who you hire. Uh, they need to be responsive uh, to your messages and they also need to be helpful. Uh, but that's gonna happen to everybody. Like everybody's gonna go through like firing people. So that's kind of natural, that's kind of normal. Uh, now I also wanna cover like safety tips for people who scale. Um, that's also something that I haven't heard anyone talk about. But basically, you know, if you wanna be doing this long term, focus on changing your store from a general store to a niche store. Uh, like there's no need for like one product store. Um, niche store is really fine, that's really good. And what I call a niche store, uh, like my ways, I call it branded drop shipping. And basically what you do is you provide good customer service, you have a lots of VAs, you can also provide phone support. Uh, what you do is also you have custom packaging, uh, faster shipping, like you talk, we negotiate with your supplier, faster shipping, and you add thank you notes in the orders. And basically you also pay to have your own unique content, your own images and own videos. And that is what I'm currently doing actually. Uh, I have phone support, uh, I have multiple VAs, we have 24 seven customer support, we have custom packaging, um, we have faster shipping, and we are just uh, we're just adding thank you notes as well, you know, and we're also working on getting more of our own content. So this is what I'm doing, branded drop shipping. And you know, if you wanna do it long term, also again, don't steal people's, uh, other people's video, uh, don't, get, don't get banned by Facebook, you know, and don't sell trademark products. Um, you know, the thing guys is scaling is easy. The hard part is not making mistakes that can cost your business during the scaling part. You know, when you scale, like everything becomes kind of risky. Like if you're spending a lot of money and something happens with your ads or something happens, you can easily lose a thousand bucks a day. Like right now, guys, uh, I'm making around 13 to 15K a day. I'm spending like 6K on ads, approximately $6,000 on ads a day. And you know, if you're spending like this amount of money and like everything needs to be on point, if something messes up, I can easily lose a few thousand dollars a day, you know? So that's why guys, uh, like when you scale, scaling Facebook ads, it's kind of easy. What's hard is you need to have systems for everything. You need to have good customer support, you need to have all the systems so you can keep up because it's gonna be so much work, you know? Um, I've uh, I've made over $580,000, which is around 11K or almost 12,000 orders. You know, it's just, just so much, uh, just so many orders, guys. And you really need to have the systems. So uh, what you need to also focus on is to have your dispute and chargeback rate low. Um, basically, like if you, if you have too high chargeback rate, uh, you can get banned by, uh, by PayPal, you can get banned by Stripe. Uh, you really need to be careful. Um, if you if you get if you get it too high, what you can also get is you can get banned by Visa and Mastercard. Um, I think their limit for chargeback rate is around three percent. So really, guys, be careful. Focus on your customers. You know, if you if you focus on your customers, uh, trying to help them, and you focus on customer happiness, um, you're not gonna have three percent chargeback rate. Yeah, right. So make sure that your supplier ships a product fast. Uh, fast. Uh, so that it arrives within 15 days uh, or less. Have good customer support. So for that, I recommend multiple VAs, uh, having Zendesk, uh, so you respond within 24 hours. That's good, good for the beginning. If you wanna scale even more, um, I recommend also having phone support, uh, which I just recently implemented. Um, also, make sure to check on your VAs and suppliers every two to four days. Uh, have them give you reports. Have, like Talk to them always, you know, just be in the loop, just know what is happening inside your business. And another thing is you need to diversify risk. 
So you need to create a backup BM, uh, business manager. Uh, Facebook allows you to have two, and this is what I recommend having two. Uh, some people are able to get three or four or more. Um, I don't really recommend that. I talked to my Facebook rep and he just recommends having uh, two business managers uh, because that is what Facebook officially allows. If you have more, um, it can kind of flag you. You can also lose your other business managers as well. So just be careful. You need to have multiple ad accounts. Um, you need to have a, another backup payment processor. So if you have like PayPal and Stripe, I also recommend getting a blue, getting blue snap just in case something happens with Stripe. You know, otherwise like you would lose everything and you just cannot, like, you just lose your Stripe and you cannot process cards that easily. Uh, then what I recommend is have more, like more stores. Um, so just don't have one, have like multiple stores. Um, and also another thing guys, uh, have like multiple debit or credit cards. What sometimes happens is like you sometimes max out your, um, like the, the card limit and that will block the card and then your ads just stop spending, right? So you need to be careful about that. You, you should have multiple cards. You should raise the limit, uh, the spending limit of the cards. Um, and also, you know, you need to be careful because sometimes uh, when I paid for some software, it kind of flagged my bank account and they would block my card. And if you don't have like backup payment methods on your ad account, your whole ads can just get paused. So uh, you need to be careful about that thing those things and you always need to have backups another key thing guys when you start making money don't start spending money on non-business related things guys realize that the money that you're making is not your money that is your company's money like if you if you have company of course like if you have company like the money that you're making is not your personal money that's a company's money so when you scale you know uh, the thing is like some unexpected things can happen like PayPal can hold your money or the card processor can hold your money and then you're like then you have then you don't have enough money to fulfill orders or then you don't have enough money for ads and you just I heard so many like horror stories when people didn't have a reserve like they didn't have enough money and then got a hold and they couldn't fulfill orders and when they couldn't fulfill orders they couldn't get their money released so it just was like a vicious cycle you know it just was horrible so guys don't start don't start spending money uh like since since you know i since i scaled you know um in october i didn't really like buy anything fancy um i didn't really even go travel yet you know so i'm just saving my money for the the bad days basically um and also what i recommend guys is get a tax advisor once you hit six figures like nobody's talking about that everybody's talking about revenues or profits but even profits don't matter if you don't have a good tax advisor you really need to figure out your taxes and don't ask people in facebook groups or don't ask me about taxes i'm from czech republic i don't know u.s taxes you know i don't know how it how it works um i talked to a u.s tax advisor uh who does shopify and amazon so like if you guys are looking for a tax advisor you guys can hook uh, you guys can like hit me up right but like don't ask me specific questions about taxes i don't know what are the taxes in the us so don't ask me uh then you know be humble don't get cocky like the money you're making it doesn't really matter much like i see a lot of people like making money and they're just thinking they're like they're amazing but the thing guys um your product could die anytime your product could just stop selling anytime. So make sure to keep working hard. Like when you start getting success, that's a time where you should be working even more. You shouldn't be like, you shouldn't be like relaxing. You should even push harder. And basically, you know, now that now it's not the time to relax. Now it's time to sprint to just grow even faster. You found your first success. So let's keep growing your business. And also, I just wanted to tell you guys that this is not everything that I do. Those are not all my strategies. Like if I would reveal all my strategies, this video would be like 24 hours long or something. It would be just very, very long. And yeah, that's what she said. Okay, guys, another few tips on long-term success. And that is invest in yourself. Um, like if you're already at six figures, uh, more, more, like most courses will be useless for you. Um, I haven't found many courses, you know, like once I scaled, I haven't found many courses that 
really helped me. Um, you know, it feels like the, the courses are like, most, if they're good, they're kind of designed to get you to $1,000 a day or maybe $3,000 a day. Um, and I haven't seen any like advanced courses that will help you at the $5,000 or $10,000 a day level. I haven't seen any courses like that. Um, and what I recommend is that mentorships is the most useful way to grow. Um, like once you hit five figures and six figures, mentorships are the most effective way to grow. Another good way to grow is to network uh, through events, uh, Facebook groups and Instagram. Uh, the quick tip with networking is don't be selfish. Uh, the, like my thing is I'm always thinking about like how I can, how can I help the other person? And I'm just really focus, focusing on building trust and building a lot of goodwill. That's kind of the same thing that I'm doing on YouTube. I just really focus on trust. Uh, trust to me is just everything, guys. And you know, trust and value, trust and helping people. Uh, I feel like those thing can those things can just get you so far. Because um, like when you're in the online marketing space, uh, trust is so important. Like even if you're e-commerce stores, um, if there is not trust, they think like you're sketchy or spammy or, uh, or scammy, uh, they're just not gonna buy from you. And that's the same, like if you wanna network with someone and you don't have a profile picture, like I don't, I don't even read those messages. Like if you, if you don't have a, like your profile pic, you know, and like, it's just so weird guys. So whenever you're trying to network, don't start with like me, 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 and I need help this, 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 you know, try to figure out like how to network in a way of like helping each other or helping the other person. Cause you know, that's the, that's the fastest way to network. I'm not saying I'm a net networking expert. Uh, I'm not, you know, uh, but basically like my mentality and my strategy is just always to help other people and always focus on building a good relationship and building trust and just win-win relationships. Uh, that's why I have the, my resources page. Uh, I was able to partner with Word First, with Blue Snap, I'm partnering up. I'm also partnering up with EcomVids, with a tax advisor. Basic guys, uh, also an email marketing expert. So I'm not the, the person that's gonna recommend you like cheap like product research software or like some subscriptions, like cheap stuff. You know, I focus on giving people value and like people like email marketing experts. You know, um, like payment processors. Uh, word first to transfer money and a lot of other stuff, you know, those are the things that people people actually need who are doing a real business. You know, I'm not focusing on the newbie stuff um, and making money out of newbies. I'm just focusing on helping people who are serious about building a real business and about people who are at five figures, six figures and beyond. Um, so another thing guys is since I scaled, I've reinvested around uh, 30K uh, in my business and in myself, you know, um, I'm just really heavily reinvesting. And just this year alone, I plan on investing at least $150,000 in myself. So I'm just really happy that now I'm just making a lot of money from my store. Uh, that money will be just mostly used for me. Um, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be using, using it to, to buy a Lambo or something. Um, I'm gonna be investing that money uh, in myself at first. Uh, that is the plan for this year. And then the next year, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be investing more into like real estate or some other stuff, uh, like more long term things as well to just secure my income as well. But this year, I just want to really heavily invest in myself. OK, guys, uh, I just also want to give you a quick um, like a quick reminder. Um, so, you know, the giveaway, uh, basically me and Ricky Hayes, um, we are hosting the giveaway. And um, I, like six people are gonna win, basically. The first, uh, so the first person is gonna win a 60 minute coaching call with me. Uh, the second place is gonna win a 30 minute coaching call with me. And the third place is gonna win $50 directly to their PayPal. And Ricky, uh, Ricky Hayes, uh, he's giving away a 60 minute coaching call. Um, then he's also giving away his course to one person and then he's giving away $50 to PayPal. So six people can win. Uh, we're doing this um, like kind of like uh, together. We're hosting it, this giveaway together. And guys, uh, I really recommend you guys to check out Ricky Hayes. Uh, he's one of the legit guys. Um, he's crushing it. Like, like me compared to him, I'm really nothing. 
you know, like guys, check him out. Um, he has made over 2.6 million in just like during the time when I was just making like 400K or 500K, he managed to make over $2.6 million. You know, uh, his YouTube channel has also good content as well. Um, it's not very hypey. It's not very like lifestyle. It's more very like educational. So if you guys are serious about building a business um, and building a profitable dropshipping store and not just trying to get rich quick, uh, then Ricky's channel is also highly recommended. How do you win this giveaway? Like how do you enter this giveaway? Well, you must complete all these tasks. Like this will be verified. You need to complete all these tasks. And the first step is subscribe to my YouTube channel and subscribe to Ricky Hayes YouTube channel. The second step is share this video and at the, at the same time also share uh, Ricky's giveaway video. So basically share my video and his video uh, to at least one of your friends who's interested into e-commerce. Uh, then you should be doing is uh, like this video and go to Ricky Hayes and also like his video. The fourth step is leave at least five unique comments on my video, on this video and go to Ricky's video as well and leave another five unique comments there as well. Uh, the last step, the fifth step is join my YouTube group, uh, my Facebook group and also join Ricky's, uh, Ricky's Facebook group. Uh, all the links and all the instructions in case you forget uh, are just down below in the description. Cool, I'm really glad that you watched the whole video till the end. I really appreciate that. Um, like in the meantime, before we announce a winner, it's gonna be 10 days. So in the meantime, I just invite you to go to my channel, uh, check out some of my YouTube videos. Uh, go to also Ricky Hayes, you know, uh, he's a good friend of mine. Um, he has also very good content as well, very educational. He's not very hype, he's kind of like me. Uh, we're kind of like, we don't really hype stuff. We just show you, uh, like I really focus on showing my journey and Ricky just really focuses on showing you like step-by-step -step tips on what to do certain tasks. So I really invite you to check out my older videos and also check out uh, Ricky Hayes videos in the meantime before we announce the winner in just 10 days. Oh.